Hello everyone, and welcome to another Cutrate Commander Precon Upgrade Guide, the series in which we give Precon decks a glow up without breaking the bank. My name is Grazit, and today we'll be giving the Duskmorn Jumpscare Precon $35 worth of upgrades to bring it up to Cutrate standards. As usual though, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this content. Consider supporting the channel directly, either via my Buy Me A Coffee or my Game Nerds affiliate links in the description if you really like it, and stick around until the end of the video to see what Precon will be covering next. Also, if you'd like to see me and my editor's thoughts of the base Precon before any upgrades, you can do so by checking out our first impressions of it also in the description. So, with that out of the way, let's start by taking a look at the commander and playstyle. This deck's face commander is Zamon Mystery Unraveler, a 3-3 human wizard that costs 2 and Simic that has the following ability. Whenever a land you control enters, manifest dread if this is the first time this ability has resolved this turn. Otherwise, you may turn a permanent you control face up. Breaking down her core stats, Zamon is sporting a midweight CMC, a slightly below average stat block for her cost, and an ability that allows us to repeatedly get cards from our deck into play face down and flip them face up at no mana cost, provided we can get enough lands into play to do so. And I really can't stress enough on how important it is for us to reliably get more than one land drop each turn to get the maximum usage out of her, since if we're limited to the standard one land drop each turn, all we'll be getting is a vanilla 2-2 that we might be able to flip over if it's a creature by paying its full mana cost, and a card in our bin for our trouble, which is quite underwhelming. Thankfully though, this precon comes with a variety of built-in ways for us to get additional lands into play, a good number of which are at instant speed, which allows us to A, reliably flip our face-down permanence via the second part of Zamon's ability, bypassing Manifest's normal limitation of only flipping up face-down creatures, and B, letting us get more Manifests into play on our opponent's turns, or allowing us to flip over our Manifests on their turn instead to catch them off guard with, ultimately making Zamone, an excellent source of pseudo draw and pseudo ramp by letting us repeatedly get additional resources into play at no mana cost. So, in an effort to improve upon the value Zamone generates in this build even further, we'll be building upon the base deck's already solid land focused foundation with even more means to get lands into play on both our and our opponent's turns. The former category, seeing us add in ways to repeatedly get additional lands into play from our hand and or deck, as well as ways for us to reanimate lands from our bin that were either sent there by Zamone or via their own effects to get extra usage out of them as well, and the latter category being augmented by a whole slew of new fetch lands, each of which enables Zamon to manifest dread and immediately flip over the manifested card on the same turn if we crack them immediately, or that we can instead crack on our opponent's turns to manifest even more cards for us to flip over later, all of which we'll be able to get even more mileage out of via the land recursion additions we'll be making as well. Then, in order for us to make even further usage out of all the landfall and manifesting we'll be doing than the base deck provides, we'll be adding in further payoffs for both to generate us more board presence and value, as well as a handful of high impact permanents that we'll be aiming to either cheat out with Zamon in the early game, or hard cast with all our ramp in the late game so we can close out the game with, enabling Zamon's legally distinct form of Simic value to overwhelm our opponents. So let us planeswalk to the plain of Duskmorn and into the house, the impossibly large, complex, and horrific structure that has consumed the entire plain and its population within it. It is here, in this labyrinthian nightmare, that we'll find Zamon, initially part of the rescue team sent to find and retrieve Nashi from within the house, but now forced to play its twisted game of survival. Having been separated from the rest of the team alongside Tyvar, these two unlikely allies must now face the horrors of the house themselves, from the psychotic Razorkin who hunt their fellow survivors for their own twisted amusement, fanatical cultists who worship the house as a god of fear that will stop at nothing to prevent escape to appease their deity, and bloodthirsty horrors manifested from the house itself by the twisted dreams of the elder demon trapped within its walls. But just because they're trapped and being hunted doesn't mean that they're helpless, as between Zamon's keen intellect and Tyvar's brute strength, they may just have what it takes to complete the mission and get out alive before the house and its denizens consume them. 
So, now that we know a bit more about the Commander and her playstyle, let's jump straight into the upgrades. So, considering that our Commander can't make full use out of her landfall triggers unless we can get multiple lands into play per turn, the first thing we'll be doing is augmenting the base build admittedly already decent sources of extra land drops, with even more entries to proc Simone's landfall as reliably and as frequently as possible. Starting off with some more combat-focused sources of extra land drops, we'll be cutting Yavamaya Elder, whose basic land tutoring is okay but a bit too slow for our needs, in favor of Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath, whose on attack draw, life gain, and extra land drop is not only more powerful, but who also synergizes better with Zamon since she can prevent him from sacking himself if manifested since he's technically not entering when we flip him face up, and removing Body of Knowledge, which is again a serviceable draw source, but just too generic here to get the most usage, so we'll be giving it spot to Ojer Castleum Deepest Growth, who can easily cheat lands and creatures into play from our deck as she gets in for damage to fuel our game plan and net us value, which shouldn't be an issue considering her massive trampling stat block, and even nets us another land drop if she's removed by coming back into play as a land when that happens, which we can later use to bring her right back into play. Then, in order to augment our deck's only proper source of additional land drops, we'll be disassembling Scab Ruinator, whose self-reanimation on a big evasive stat block may combine nicely with Simone Surveil, but really isn't necessary here since we have other big creatures who synergize better with our land-focused playstyle, and scrapping Simic Signet, since we'd rather have more land-focused sources of ramp rather than mana rocks like this one, so we can make space for Azusa Lost But Seeking and Druid Clash. Both of which passively let us play lands that we draw into or that we can play from our bin, more on those later, with the former letting us get two more lands into play for even more landfall triggers, while the latter may only net us one but lets us pad our life totals as we make our land drops and eventually weaponize our land base to make up for it. From there, we'll also be aiming to take further advantage of our commander's ability to constantly manifest cards by replacing Sentinel Hierophants, whose ability to turn all our creatures into mana dorks really doesn't help our game plan outside of the ramp it provides, which we already have more than covered, with the new threats around every corner, which allows the first land drop we make each turn to both manifest Dread and flip the card we manifest by immediately fetching up another basic land from our deck into play freeing up the rest of our extra land playing sources to flip up more cards or to set us up for future turns. Then as an extra land drop that also doubles as removal, we'll be sidelining Biomass Mutation, which is admittedly a serviceable instant speed overrun style effect, but loses out to the build's other overrun style effects that are either more powerful or on permanence we can actually manifest, and adding in Insidious Fungus, which is a cheap body that we can leave in play to either use as another growth spiral for the instant speed cantrip and land drop, or that we can instead use as back row removal, which helps Helps pad the base builds lower than average removal suite. And lastly, as some instant speed ways to get extra land drops so we can manifest and flip cards on our opponent's turns, we'll be swapping out the ramp pieces Wilderness Reclamation, Disorienting Choice, and Explosive Vegetation, which are either too instant speed focused, too unreliable, or simply too power crept to be worth running here, so we can swap in Harrow, Roiling Regrowth, and Entish Restoration, all of which let us manifest Dread and flip up the manifested card on our opponent's turns thanks to getting two lands into play at flash speed, and that's on top of also letting us set up our bin with more lands for us to recur and or reanimate later, and the third even letting us get three lands into play instead alongside all our big statted creatures. Now, staying on to getting additional lands into play game plan, but shifting our focus specifically onto lands that can do so, of which the base build has a handful already but we will be aiming to bolster significantly, we'll be terraforming Ash Barrens, Thornwood Falls, Quandrix Campus, Temple of Mystery, and Castle Vantress into the Slow Fetches, Broker's Hideout, Escape Tunnel, Shire Terrace, Bant Panorama, and Promising Vein, none of which are faster than the lands they replace 
place, but do enable us to either manifest and flip the card we manifest if we crack them on the turn they come down, or, alternatively, allow us to manifest multiple cards if we stagger the turns we crack them to build up our face down count, raising overflowing basin so we can build a demolition field, which is admittedly a bit more mana intensive to crack, but does allow us to pop our opponent's utility lands for our mana investment while also letting us manifest and or flip over cards, and tearing down Mosswart Bridge so we can replant a Blighted Woodland, which functions as a faster copy of Myriad Landscape to net us three land drops either all in one turn or spread across two turns depending on whether we need more manifesting or more card flipping. So, having just added a bunch of lands that can sack themselves away to net us more landfall triggers, it only makes sense for us to add in a handful of ways to get additional usage out of them considering just how useful they are at enabling our commander. Which is why we'll be slotting out the two spell casting dependent draw source, Rashmi Eternity's Crafter, the odd clone spell inclusion Cackling Counterpart, and the two indiscriminate exiling board wipe over Simplify, so we can slot in Conduit of Worlds, Ramen Up Excavator, and Perennial Behemoth, all of which let us play lands from our graveyard so that we may reuse all our fetches over and over again, with the first also giving us the option to cast permanent spells from our bin for even more recursion, cutting down the excess dual land a Tangled Islet to make room for Bonnie Paul Clearcutter, who functions as another big body for us to either cheat out early or to hard cast with her land scaling token later, that also provides repeatable card advantage advantage and lets us reanimate any land from our bin when any of our creatures attack, or from our hand instead if we'd rather. And lastly, sidelining Kefnet the Mindful, whose land bouncing draw can be useful to reproc our landfall triggers, but is just too mana intensive to be worth running here, so we can put in Undergrowth Recon, which simply provides no questions asked land reanimation each turn to flip over more of our manifests and reset up our fetches for following turns. And then to wrap up the landfall-focused portion of our deck, we'll be augmenting the base build selection of landfall payoffs with a few more members to get even more mileage out of all the lands we'll be putting into play, in which we'll be letting go of the land ramp pieces on bodies, Greater Tanuki and Beanstalk Giant, since we have more than enough ramp already, so we can bring in Rampaging Baeloths and Avenger of Zendikar, both of which can absolutely flood our board with either decent-sized or ever-growing token bodies as as we make our land drops to crack into our opponents with. Now having covered the last of our land-centric entries, let's switch gears onto the handful of face-down support pieces we'll be adding to the build, admittedly most of which will still be coming from our commander and what was already in the deck, but will give us a few more options to enable and benefit from our face-downs, which will first see us boost our ability to put cards into play face-down by scrapping Giggling Skitter Spike, which can be very powerful in a deck that can target it to make use of its repeatable AoE burn effect, but here is just just okay, so we can add in Vanifar Evolved Enigma, who can cloak any permanents we draw into that we'd rather cheat into play with our commander, or, if we already have a good number of face downs in play, can instead load them up with counters so they can crack in even harder on either side, and then, as a pair of face down centric payoffs, we'll be shelving the bit too generic draw source Dig Through Time and the mediocre landfall payoff Retreat to Coralheim so we can make space for secret plans and and paranormal analyst, the former directly benefiting from our face downs by turning them into card advantage as we turn them face up, and the latter indirectly benefiting from our face down centric playstyle by turning our commander's manifest dread into card advantage rather than graveyard setup. And at last, reaching the end of our upgrades, we'll be using the last of our budget to supplement the base build selection of high CMC entrants that will either be cheating out with the moan, or hard casting once we've built up our land base to help us close out games with, which will see us replace the poor man cyclonic rift Aether Gale with the repeatable fight effect on a body Thorn Mammoth, which takes advantage of our constant stream of manifested creatures to crash its 6-6 stat block against our opponent's creatures 
over and over again, cutting the too slow and defensive token generator, Sandworm Convergence, so we can make space for the much faster Coma Cosmos Serpent, which creates 3-3 three, three tokens every upkeep to build up our board, and lets us use those tokens to either make itself indestructible for added resilience, or to tap down our opponent's permanence and shut down their activated abilities for additional disruption, up to and including their lands if we're feeling particularly evil, raising the outright bad land, a Temple of the False God, so we can add in the legally distinct giant primate, Kogla the Titan Ape, who's on attack back row destruction again helps bolster our ability to disrupt our opponents, while its huge stat block can pile on the damage and its ability to bounce our commander can protect both itself and them from removal. And finally, swapping out the deck's alternate commander, Kian Corrupted Memory, whose ability to let us cast our spells at flash speed can be situationally useful here, but really deserves a build of our own to get the maximum usage out of it, so we'll be swapping in glorious Sunrise in her place, which works nicely as a piece of value if we hit it early off of Zamone, thanks to the repeatable ramp and draw it provides, while still being very useful if we hit it or hard cast it in the later game, where we can instead use it as another overrun style effect to ensure all our high power creatures can reliably crash through blockers and close out the game for us. So, now that we've covered all 30 cards which we've upgraded from the core build, let's take a look at the breakdown for this pre-con upgrade. Looking at the stats that matter to our game plan, we have 13 cards that can put other cards into play face down, 2 cards that can put themselves into play face down, 15 cards that care about face down cards either directly or indirectly, and 3 ways for us to flip face down cards face up, giving us a solid foundation to enable and support Zamone's manifest dread by getting more face downs into play, generating value off of them and flipping them up alongside her. 42 cards that care about lands in some capacity, and 29 that can get additional lands into play, giving us an absolutely massive amount of land support to both enable and generate value alongside our commander as we make our land drops from our hand, deck, and graveyard. And lastly, 24 CMC 5 plus permanents that Zamone can flip face up for us, giving us a large pool of big spells that our commander can easily cheat into play for us at no mana cost, and that we can use to outpace our opponent via their massive stat blocks and or powerful effects. For general deck stats, we have 27 ramp sources, 12 card draw sources, 11 targeted removal sources, and 2 board wipes. With our ramp being off the charts in this build, though this is entirely intentional as we'll need all the land ramp we can get in order to proc our commander's landfall as often as possible for maximum value. Looking at our mana curve, we have an average CMC of 4.13, which may appear staggeringly high initially, but do keep in mind that we'll be cheating out the majority of our high CMC spells with Simone and have a massive ramp package on top of that, making this high CMC curve a lot more manageable than it may initially appear. The final price of this build then comes out to be $75.19 after upgrades. This price does not include tax or shipping, and assumes that the price you paid for the pre-con was $40. The price of the cards was calculated by using the cheapest listed marketplace price on TCG Player at the time of this recording. Now, before we move on to the pricier upgrade suggestions, I'd like to briefly mention Abhorrent Oculus, Hauntwood Shrieker, and The Room Walk-In Closet slash Forgotten Cellar, all of which can be found in the main Duskmourne set and would be fantastic in this build thanks to the face down and land support they provide, but, at least at the time of this recording, their prices haven't quite settled yet, making it impossible for me to add them to the upgrades proper while staying within budget. Though if you do happen to get your hands on any of them, they would be a great fit, and I would suggest swapping out Roiling Regrowth, Undergrowth Recon, and Growing Dread for them respectively. Now, if we'd like to further upgrade this deck by going over budget, we can terraform the Bounce Land Simic Growth Chamber into the Fetch Land Fabled Passage as a moderate upgrade, which gives us yet another way to proc Simone twice off a single land drop, and even brings that land into play untapped so we don't slow ourselves down as we do so. Kogla the Titan Ape can be replaced with the more land-focused Ancient Green Warden as a more substantial upgrade, which gives us another way to recur lands from our bin and doubles all our landfall triggers for even more value as our lands come into play. 
The low cost enchantment Growing Dread can be exchanged out for the high cost enchantment Omniscience as another substantial upgrade, which immediately lets us flood the board with all the spells in our hand for free the instant it comes down for an absurd amount of value. And if we want to push our spending to the absolute limit, we can trade out the reasonably costed land focused enchantments Druid Class and Undergrowth Recon for the significantly more expensive land focused enchantments Exploration and burgeoning, both of which come down quickly and allow us to rapidly load up our board with lands to proc both our commander and all our other landfall payoffs. Though do be aware, this is not what your financial advisor meant by suggesting you may want to invest in real estate. Thanks everyone for sticking around until the end of the video. So, with the Jump Scare Precon upgrade complete, the next Precon we'll be tackling will be the Miracle and Enchantment focused Miracle Worker Precon and its face commander, Amanatu Veil Piercer. So look forward to that build coming soon. That said, while you wait for the rest of the Precon upgrades, you'll have the opportunity to vote for which one of the Precon alternate commanders you want to see get a build of their very own. Those being the Flash Bead casting Kian Corrupted Memory, the Enchantment Reanimating the Master of Keys, the Burn Inflicting the Lord of Pain, and the Multi-Type Card Payoff Rendmaw Creaking Nest. So be sure to cast your votes, link in the description, before the deadline on October 11th, and let me know in the comments which commander you voted for, and which other commanders from this set you'd like to see me feature in future polls. And again, before we close out, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy this content to help keep this channel growing. Consider donating to my Buy Me A Coffee, or using my Game Nerds affiliate link in the description if you want to support the channel directly. And, if you want to see more videos like this one, either click on the videos floating around my head for the latest builds, or click on the card above for a playlist of all the videos I've made so far. And with that, have a good one folks, and stay safe.